At the present time, we have built into Epic a screening tool. So the screening tool asks every question, every patient as they come to a clinic, when they're in front of you in the clinic, it asks them, asks first, do they have symptoms? Second, do they have travel? And third, do they have potential exposures? If the answers are travel or exposures plus symptoms, then at the present time, that patient is given a mask, immediately moved back to a, a private exam room. The healthcare providers are to wear a mask, gowns, glove, and a face shield. They take further evaluation of the patient uh, regarding history and symptoms. They would then call their infection control practitioner professional, which depends on which of our hospitals or affiliates that is, but that pops up in a BPA on EPIC, so they follow the EPIC guidance, and they would call the local health department. So we believe our current screening process is safe and efficient, and it's done as soon as the patient arrives at a clinic or an emergency department. There is no need for our healthcare providers to routinely be wearing masks or N95 respirators. They only need to wear a mask when they're dealing with a patient with a potentially droplet spread disease, like COVID, or other respiratory diseases if they consider the patient might have RSV or influenza or another respiratory virus or some bacteria such as pertussis, then before they have any contact with the patient, they should be wearing a mask. Now in a clinic, it's also important to put a mask on the patient. And even if the patient has a mask on, the healthcare providers, when they're in the same room, should also wear a mask for double protection. Finally, I do want to say that these masks are single-use disposable items. They should not be worn around the neck. They shouldn't be left in the pocket. Once they're used, they should be immediately disposed of. So the goal here is to keep any possible COVID patient or even a patient with known COVID at home. About 80% of patients with COVID have mild to moderate disease and can be managed at home they would be under quarantine by the state in terms of their travel. And we are looking into re means of using telemedicine to provide appropriate care for those people while they're at home, because they may have other diseases such as diabetes, and we may need to test them for other diseases that they could have, such as influenza that we'd wanna provide therapy to. So telemedicine will be a key way of providing safe care to those people while they're at home. So I certainly think it's reasonable. I think telemedicine is the future. There are issues regarding reimbursement and there are issues regarding uh, ability to actually get the information that you need. Some patients will have to be physically examined. But I certainly think telemedicine is a wave of the future. If we can solve some of the logistic and reimbursement issues and to the extent we can provide telemedicine, patients will be happy to get that service at home. So I see that expanding not only for this epidemic, both for initial evaluation of patients with respiratory symptoms, patients that may be possible rule out cases for COVID or patients actually with COVID, but I see that in the future we'll have a vast expansion of telemedicine uh, just in general. COVID-19 is a new coronavirus to humans, probably came from bats. There are other coronaviruses in humans. Certainly it is mutating and changing, but we've not seen that that's affect either its transmission or had any effect on the clinical symptoms or their outcome uh, over time. 